Right, so going to go through um, probably just part one actually of this, um, Team B cells in the immune response. Um, in, in the books it's um, described as being about communication between cells and the point they're trying to get there is that a lot of what's going on here is relying on cells sending chemical signals to uh, one another. It might be a signal to identify something, it might be a signal to tell a cell to um, uh, proliferate, make more of them like the T and the B cells when they make more of them. But a whole, uh, a whole kind of theme along this is that chemicals are being switched between cells, telling them, uh, as I say, telling them to do things. Usually, it works at the level of um, switching genes on is what it's doing. So, first thing um, when you think of the immune response is just to be clear on this non-specific response first of all, which is the idea of phagocytes. So, eating cells, if you like, or mouth cells, of which there are two types neutrophils, which are the commonest type of white blood cell, um, and macrophages. Uh, macrophages, slightly larger, often found in um, organs of the body. These ones are the, the kind of foot soldiers, about 70% of your, your white blood cells are neutrophils. Both of these cells will um, engulf and, and take in um, damaged cells actually, but also um, bacteria, cells that are infected by um, viruses and things. These, are, In all cases, these are the ones that are going to clean up at the end. These are the ones that, that are going to be responsible uh, for getting rid of those things. They're always going to be involved at the end, pretty much. Okay, so how does this um, relate to T and B cells? Well, pretty much any cell in your body, any cell with a nucleus, uh, red blood cells um, not counted in here, um, when they're infected by a pathogen, um, have the ability to stick uh, antigens from that pathogen, I'm obviously exaggerating the size here, on the surface of their cell, uh, on, on the cell surface membrane. Uh, and these can be detected by neutrophils and macrophages to varying degrees of um, ability. It, it's not always easy for them to pick them up, but they can do that. Um, and, and cells can actually destroy some of these things themselves a little bit. They've got lysosomes uh, in here, remember those um, organelles which contain hydrolytic enzymes, there's a nice word to use. Hydrolytic enzymes. Uh, and when they destroy pathogens, sometimes these um, antigens can end up on the outside. Macrophages, however, <coughs> have, have taken this to the next level really. And a macrophage, so we'll use red, um, does something called antigen presenting. Or antigen presenting? <laughs> it's known as an antigen presenting cell. Now, macrophages actually do um, several roles, and, and what you'll find if, if you look into anything on immunity any deeper than, than what it does in the book, you'll find that the whole process is actually a lot more complicated than you think. So sometimes if you're reading something in the book and you think, well I thought that cell actually did this, or I thought it did that, usually what's happening is um, they've simplified it, so they're, they're, they're saying, well all macrophages are the same, and, and they're not, but um, some of these macrophages um, can act as anti antigen presenting cells. And what they will do is, um, their specific role is, they will destroy um, these pathogens when they've engulfed them and they present them out on the surface of their cell. They will then travel to, they, they can travel through the blood, but they, they end up in the lymph, okay? Lymph is this system of um, fluid. It goes all the way around your body, it's, it's in vessels, um, it, it runs, sort of parallel to your blood vessels if you like, you can think of it like that. Um, and it, it's a clear kind of liquid, but it's particularly useful for these uh, white blood cells traveling. It's also where fats get um, sent from your, 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 your digestive system, bizarrely. Um, yeah, they, they, these travel to your lymph, and particularly to lymph nodes, and these little things um, in, in your lymph which are like little blobs, these are sometimes we talk about when you're ill and you say your glands have come up and you feel those little glands in your neck that uh, feel like little peas, uh, they're your lymph nodes, they're packed full of white blood cells. Now when they get there, um, they're looking for lymphocytes, and lymphocytes, cells of the lymph system, although they can move off, are basically your T and B cells, okay? So phagocytes uh, and neutrophils, macrophages, lymphocytes are T and B cells. And these form part of your specific immune response. These will be specific to a particular um, antigen. 
Now, once it gets there, it will locate, and here's where it gets a little bit fuzzy because they, they've simplified it in your books. Think of it like this. What it's gonna do is locate a T cell with the correct or um, complementary, there's a very useful word to use. We know about complementary from enzymes and from antibodies. A T cell with a complementary um, receptor. Let's get this right. So on the surface of our T cell, there will be a receptor that is complementary to the antigen. Now you've literally producing millions and millions and millions and millions of these T cells. Um, and these receptor sites are, are pretty much um, randomized shapes. So most of these T cells actually will never be used in your life. Um, uh, and, and that's fine, they're, they're not needed, they're not used. Some of them will happen to fit one of these antigen sites. Um, the, the, the receptor will fit onto one of these antigens. Now when that's happened, that's when this whole cascade starts and this is where it gets, uh, again, perhaps a little bit more complicated, but it's actually reasonably straightforward. Okay, um, and what you have is Let's just talk about this in terms of cell signalling again for a second. In fact, no, let's not. Let's just go through the, uh, the, go through the steps. Um, so our, our antigen-presenting cell has arrived in the lymph node. And we identify uh, the correct T cell. Now this is called um, clonal selection. Okay. Um, and in fact, there's two types of T cells. Uh, the current terms they're using uh, in your book are T killer cells, also sometimes known as TC or T cytotoxic cells, more about those in a second, and T helper cells. We'll deal with the T killer cells first of all. You select the one with the correct um, receptor or the complementary receptor. It then undergoes what's called clonal expansion. In other words, um, by mitosis, you make that T cell, you just make lots and lots and lots and lots of them. Um, why does it suddenly undergo this magical thing? Well, when it binds onto here, the macrophage is releasing um, chemicals which tell it, which inform this cell to start dividing. And the general term for the chemicals um, are cytokines. Now, spacing. Lots of specific words on this, I'm afraid. Cytokines. Um, chemicals that move between cells more or less okay so this process is started by um, once it's identified it's a chemical it's a cytokine that has been released uh, and I'll pause on that and move to part two in a second